I'd like to call to order the 14th regular meeting of the 2018-2019 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the evening? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change, and the leader adjusts the sails. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are nine present. Alderperson Wolf is excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from our last council meeting. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve. Thank you for that uh, motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, will the, uh, all those in favor please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Is there uh, any public forum this evening? Not this evening. Thank you. Um, Next, we'll uh, go to item 1.5, confirmation of mayor's appointments, city attorney. So the appointments from the mayor uh, for your consideration to the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet, uh, Brian Mohorich, King Park neighborhood primary, Andrea Mace, uh, King Park neighborhood alternate, Jean Grady, Valrath Park North Point neighborhood primary, Beth Cunard, Valrath Park North Point neighborhood alternate, all appointed October 1, 2018, for terms to expire April 15, 2019. Thank you. All the person, Donahue? I move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? All eyes. Motion passes. And you have to commend our um, Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride Organization for all the work they've done to get these neighborhoods to the point of becoming new neighborhood associations. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. Uh, first of all, there's some great news today. Uh, a new environmental study was finished on Highway 23, and both the D Department of Transportation at the state level and the Federal Highway Administration signed off on that review, and now uh, construction can begin this summer for 19 point, I think, five miles of new highway uh, to be built, and we'll have four lanes between Sheboygan and Fond du Lac. Uh, I'd like to thank all the volunteers who uh, worked at Rock the Block this last weekend. They did a number of projects on South 9th Street, and uh, it turned out to be a great day, and a lot of work was accomplished. Uh, our curbside leaf pickup began today. Uh, we have five different zones, uh, eat one zone for each day of the work week, and uh, people should rake their leaves into the street gutter for pickup on that day. Uh, drug take back day is going to be uh, this uh, on Saturday the 27th and it'll be from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock and our location in Sheboygan for drug pickup will be St. Nicholas Hospital. Uh, early voting continues at City Hall. This will end on November 2nd on Friday. So we thank our clerk's office for handling everybody over there. And uh, Sheboygan is conducting a resident survey right now. Uh, please uh, help make Sheboygan more livable community by considering uh, taking the, uh, the survey. You can uh, go to the city website and click on the banner ad and that'll take you to the uh, appropriate site to take the survey. And as a part of the survey, we're conducting some um, listening sessions and the listening sessions are uh, Next listening session will be on uh, October 23rd at Habitat uh, Restore, and their time for that is from 11.30 until 1 o'clock. I'd like to ask the representatives of the Rotary Clubs to please join me at the podium.
Tonight we have a proclamation, and uh, whereas the Rotary International was founded on February 23rd of 1905 in Chicago, Illinois, and is the world's first and one of the largest non-for-profit organizations, there are over 1.2 million Rotary uh, Club members comprised of professional and business leaders in over 35,000 clubs in 200 country and geographic areas. The Rotary motto is service above self and inspires its members to provide humanitarian service, encourage high ethical standards, and promote goodwill and peace in the world. And whereas Rotary in 1985 launched Polio Plus and has spearheaded the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, which today includes the World Health Organization, U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, UNICEF, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to immunize children of the world against polio. And whereas polio cases have dropped by 99.9% .9 since 1988, and the world stands on the threshold of eradicating the disease, and whereas to date Rotary has contributed more than $1.7 billion in countless volunteer hours to the protection of more than 2 billion children in 122 countries, Rotary is currently working to raise an additional $150 million, which if realized will be tripled by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for a total of $450 million over the next three years. And whereas these efforts are providing much needed operational support in medical personnel, laboratory equipment, educational materials for health workers and parents. In addition, Rotary has played a major role in decisions by donor governments to contribute more than $8 billion to this effort. And whereas the Sheboygan Rotary Club and the Sheboygan Early Bird Rotary Club and their members have to have and continue to sponsor service projects to address such critical issues as poverty, health, hunger, illiteracy, and the environment, in Sheboygan and abroad. I, Mike Vandersteen, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, to hereby proclaim October 24th is World Polio Day and encourage all of our citizens and myself to, uh, and Rotary International in the fight for polio free world. I'd like to present this to these club presidents and uh, ask them to say just a little bit about a special project that's going on on that day in Sheboygan. So we are partnering with the local area Culver's on October 24th from 4 to 8 p.m. They have um, agreed to donate 50% of their proceeds to ending polio. So we encourage everyone, and we're trying to get the word out, to please go and support this effort and um, go um, have dinner at uh, Culver's between 4 and 8 on the 24th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go on with hearings. Item 2.1 is hearing number 6 of 1819, pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices and sent by the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city of Sheboygan's official zoning map to change the use district classification of property located at 3411 Lakeshore Road from class urban industrial to class suburban industrial. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Donahue? Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 2.2 .2 is hearing number 7 of 1819, pursuant to chapter 65.9 of the laws of Wisconsin. And it was hereby given that the annual budget hearing will be held this evening, at which time any taxpayer resident of the governmental unit will have the opportunity to be heard on the proposed budget. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderperson Donahue? I move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll?
Nine ayes. Next, we'll move on to the, uh, the motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda that include items 3.2 through 3.10. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of those items? Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I just had a question for either Alderperson Donahue or the city attorney on 3.9. I read over the document about Axon Enterprise Incorporated, and I'm just wondering, get a, a little bit of a description of the services we're purchasing, and I also don't believe I could find what those services are going to cost us. City attorney? Well, you couldn't find what they were going to cost us because they cost us zero. Oh. Um, it's basically, uh, it's, a, it's a build on to the, a contract that the police already have, and it, it's, it allows our office to have access uh, to uh, video and, and other evidence uh, that is being stored by Axon, allows us to have the access that we need to, uh, you know, have it for trials. If we have to uh, send out discovery, we can take care of doing the editing that needs to be done, that kind of thing. And it takes away some of the work of that from the police department. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage on those documents? It is nine eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 4.1 through 4.12 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, uh, 5.1 is resolution number 107 of 1819 by all the persons Reinfleisch, Wolf, Donahue, Trester, Savaglio, Decker, Phillips, Sorensen, Mitchell, and Boren, commemorating the distinguished service of Scott Lewandowski to the city of Sheboygan. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move that the uh, council pass this resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. At this time, I'd like to ask the clerk to read the resolution. Okay. Resolution 107 is a resolution commemorating the distinguished service of Scott Lewandowski to the city of Sheboygan. Whereas Scott Lewandowski served the citizens of the city of Sheboygan as an alder person from the 5th district for four years from 2012 to 2014 and 2016 to 2018, during which time he served faithfully being a man of outstanding ability and integrity. And whereas during his tenure as alder person, Mr. Lewandowski served as a valuable member of numerous council committees, including law and licensing committee and salaries and grievances committee, chairman of the Historical Preservation Committee and also served as assistant city historian and volunteered his time at the Sheboygan County Historical Research Center and Sheboygan County Historical Museum. And whereas Mr. Lewandowski was a valuable member of the Common Council and the committees upon which he served, giving conscientious consideration to all matters that came before him and putting honesty and charity above all else, he will always be a good example to all. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Common Council hereby commemorates the distinguished service rendered by Mr. Scott Lewandowski to the city of Sheboygan throughout his years of service, expresses its sorrow to his passing, in his passing and offers his family and friends its deepest sympathy. And be it further resolved that this resolution be published in the Council's official proceedings and that a suitable copy be presented to the family of Scott Lewandowski. Thank you. I'd like to ask the council to uh, rise to a standing vote for this. So if you approve of the resolution, please stand. You can sit down then. Those opposed? The, the resolution passes unanimously and this will be presented to his family and friends at the uh, memorial service that will take place for Scott on Wednesday at the uh, Historical Museum. Thank you.
Moving on, item 5.2 is resolution number 106 of 1819 by Alderpersons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract or contracts to obtain trees and tree planting services to replace street trees and park trees in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, Alderperson Sorensen? I move that we suspend and pass the resolution. Second. Okay, have, under suspension, is there any discussion? Okay, then we have your motion to pass the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, is there any discussion on the re resolution? Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was wondering maybe if uh, Mr. Beeble could fill, fill us in if he knows on what type of species we're going to be planting, uh, a variety of them around town or? Yeah, it's gonna be several varieties and they're specifically chosen um, based on the type of terrace for the width, as well as if there's utilities, overhead lines, so we'll use ornamental trees, smaller trees, slower growing trees in those areas. Other areas we're using uh, the larger type of canopy trees. There, are, there is a new American elm. Uh, there is an also American chestnut, seedless. So there's other varieties that are hybrids that are coming out that are more conducive to the urban street tree environment since we're losing so many of the ash. Have those uh, species that you mentioned, do they have kind of a pro proven track record as far as uh, the things that have been affecting some of our trees over the years? They, they, they are somewhat disease resistant. All, all trees do have, gonna have some of the, some issues being that the environment between the curb and the sidewalk is, is, is a tough environment to grow, but that's, that's, these are the trees that have been uh, tested and vetted through the Urban Forestry Institute as well as the uh, DNR forestry and they've kind of guided us in terms of a recommendation in terms of the species of type of trees in these areas. Thanks. Thank you for those questions. Any other discussion? Alderperson Donahue. Uh, and Mayor, I, I would also note uh, that uh, as I understand it, um, the Rotary Foundation, uh, which is comprised of the, of the Rotary Clubs, uh, uh, the, the, our presidents who were here earlier, uh, are also um, making tree replacement uh, one of their priorities and are working with city officials to provide some funds for tree replacement. Is yes, that, that, that correct? that's correct. Uh, and the Rotary Club uh, will, uh, is asking us to pass a resolution on that. That will hopefully be referred to the committee uh, next week and come back for a final vote and more information on the program at our next council meeting. Any other discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Items uh, 5.3 through 5.6 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is RC number 156 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 101 of 1819 by Alderperson Reinfleisch, born asking, uh, rather authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2018 budget. Alderperson Reinfleisch. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 158 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee. Tumors referred general ordinance number 20 of 1819 by Alderperson Wolf, creating time parking limits on the west side of South A Street between New Jersey uh, Avenue and Virginia Avenue, and recommends approving the ordinance. Alderperson Sorensen. I move that we accept the top and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? 
Seeing none, all, would uh, the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 157 of 1819 by licensing hearings and public safety committee. To whom was referred RC number 111 of 1819 by licensing hearings and public safety committee and general ordinance number 8 of 1819 by Alderpersons Donahue and Ryan Fleisch. Uh, repealing Article um, 8 of Chapter 70 of the Municipal Code entitled Sexual Offender Residency uh, Restrictions and recommends that the document uh, be filed. Alderperson Ryan Fleisch, or Donahue, excuse me. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, accept a file. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion on the document? Alderperson Boren. Alder person Donahue, I see that this must have been the original document, and then there's a new referral on the same thing that's going to your committee in the, the next meeting? That's correct. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.4 through 6.6 .6 will lay over. Under general ordinances, uh, item 7.1 and 7.2 will be referred to the uh, various committees. And then under matters laid over, Item 8.1 is RO number 122 of 1819 by the City Planning Commission, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 17 of 1819 by Alderperson Reinfleisch and RO number 118 of 1819 by the City Clerk for an application from Gusky Electric, Inc. for a change in the zoning classification of property located at 3411 Lakeshore Road from Class Urban Industrial to Class Suburban Industrial and recommends approval of general ordinance and RO. Uh, Alderperson Boring. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to we'll accept and file and pass the ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. Any discussion on the ordinance? Alderperson Boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I abstained on this at the Plan Commission, and I'll be uh, abstaining again tonight as this is being rezoned for my wife's chiropractor's office. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight ayes, one abstain. Motion passes. Item 8.2 will be referred, uh, and rather just lay over. And uh, under other matters, uh, will be a discussion of the 2019 proposed budget. I'll call on Administrator Daryl Hufflin. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, tonight on your table, uh, Carrie Aaron's uh, distributed copies, uh, they're in pink, uh, relating to uh, suggested uh, additional changes to the 2019 budget. Uh, the top page identifies, uh, the first item identifies action already discussed or possible action already discussed at the Committee of the Whole for uh, adding a project uh, that is cable, re cable fund related associated with a new fiber line. The next th uh, three adjustments uh, are based upon the information we, we received from the state, both on the uh, revised cost of living as well as revised state aids. Uh, the first listing is uh, an, a slight decrease in the connecting highway aids, $152. The next is a sizable increase in tra general transportation aids of 85323 increase. Uh, the last is associated with, again, that cost of living adjustment as we've discussed it at the Community of the Whole. 
uh, the cost of living affects the city's expenditure restraint program. And we received information from the state. Uh, based upon the formula, we are allowed to increase our budget up to 3.36. If you turn to the next page of your packet, you'll see uh, the first line is general fund expense under the uh, 2019 budget facts page. You'll see that the expenditure on this pink page shows in the last column a percent increase of 2.2 percent. So even though the city is allowed to increase uh, as much as 3.36, uh, city staff is recommending uh, an adjustment to allow for a 2.2. The original budget pages that were presented to you identified a 1.27 percent. Uh, so we're uh, increasing by roughly uh, nine tenths of a percent. Uh, the reason for the, the way in which uh, the increase in the expenditures in the general fund, uh, how that's uh, recommended to uh, be changed, is that the reserve for contingency, which if you look at on your pink pages, uh, page 216, so second to the last page of your pink pages, you'll see the unclassified uh, program page. The second to the last line uh, is reserved for contingency. And you'll see the difference between the two columns, 2019 requested and 2019 committee. Uh, that number has increased by $350,000. So the recommendation is with the uh, uh, revised or identified cost of living that the city take advantage in order to uh, provide for further sort of capacity when we're, o when we're looking at a year from now at the 2020 budget. So this simply raises the floor. Uh, as you know, this, uh, the uh, department heads uh, budget carefully. Uh, they monitor their budget carefully and ultimately uh, more times than not, uh, the uh, unclassified reserve for contingency line item is never touched uh, or, or, again, only maybe in a limited way. So the hope and expectation is this $350,000 will not be spent, but simply by placing that, that additional funds in this line item, it will give us a larger base to work from when we were, again, sitting at these desks uh, a year from now. Um, if I could next turn your attention to, again, the, on the pink pages, it's really the fourth physical page. It's uh, page number 91. So with the increase in the total expenditures on the last column, the two, 2019 committee uh, recommended column, in order um, we do have some, as I mentioned, offsetting increases due to transportation or highway aids, but that does not fully fund all of the $350,000 increase in the reserve for contingency. So the remaining, rem the, uh, the remaining amount is coming uh, down toward the bottom where it says excess of revenue over under expenditure. So the last column, uh, for that line item is $1,165,778. Your original budget pages had that number at 900949 So uh, sort of the good news, bad news is that we have the capacity to increase our expenditures. Uh, I'm not recommending any other corresponding revenue sources other than tapping at least for the purpose of balancing the budget applying this fund balance. So uh, this fund balance will increase due to the expenses uh, going up. Um, when you go down to the second line from the bottom, I know this is sort of getting in the weeds as far as <clears throat> details, but under ending fund balance consists of the uncommitted line. Uh, so that number, that revised number is uh, 15866850 uh, and that is equivalent to 41.2%. Uh, 
I know that often when we talk budget strategies, we talk about the fund balance percent, uh, the fund balance as a percent of our uh, expenditures. Um, originally, when I presented the budget, it was at 42 percent, so roughly eight tenths of a percent. It is dropping due to uh, a higher uh, applied fund balance uh, because, again, strategically, it, um, I'm recommending that we increase our expenditures again to put us in a better position when we're budgeting in 2020. Uh, often when we talk with Moody's about uh, our fund balance as a percent of our expenditure, we draw attention not only to this uh, uncommitted line, but we also talk to them about our contingency line account as well. Uh, so we, I, we will tell them that we're artificially increasing from 150 to 350. So in essence, here is an additional $350,000 that is expected to remain uh, unspent or unallocated. And uh, as a result, we feel that that should be considered part of our, our overall uncommitted fund balance. Uh, going into calendar year 2019. Uh, that is a summary of, of changes that we will uh, be discussing uh, at your next Common Council meeting. I will be asking from the floor uh, an amendment to the 2019 uh, budget resolution to take into consideration the items which I've discussed tonight. Thank you very much for that report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. Next item is other matters received after the agenda was published. City Attorney Adams. 10.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2018, June 30, 2019, and June 30, 2020. That will be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. Alder Person Donahue. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned and go Packers and Brewers. Have a good evening.